everyone, welcome to Johnny How To. In this video, we're going to be taking this shot from, I think it's Alien Resurrection. It might be Aliens, I can't quite remember, but we have this shot of this shuttle going into the uh, hangar bay, and we're going to try and use tracking to expedite and speed up our rotoscoping. So, what I would like to do in this shot is take out or cut out the ship or create a mask for it so I can color correct it and make it different. And really this is more an exercise more than anything else, but it's a really good example of how when you use tracking, you can really speed up the process. And so if I wanted to do this the traditional way, I would make a roto shape as usual, and I would just create a roto shape around it. I'm going to do a really bad job right now just because I'm doing this to illustrate a point, but I would go ahead and go around this guy and then I would have to go to where it changes a significant amount of shape or it changes direction. And then I would have to update all my roto shapes and, and my points and things like that to try and make it blend in. And basically I have to do all the in-between work or I have to do all the main work and then the computer tries to do the in-between work. We can imagine this would be a lot of work and take some time. Now, that being said, this is an ideal example because it's a very static object. It's not organic moving like a person or anything like that. So it's not a horrible example, but let's go ahead and try and use this as an example to where we can go ahead and use tracking to make things much, much easier on us and using uh, that workflow in a very flexible way. So first off, I wanna talk about picking the right channel to track. Now, you could just try and track this as is because there is a pretty good amount of contrast between the ship and the background here. By the way, I'm gonna start probably around uh, frame, eh, maybe like frame 29 or something. When it's actually in the hangar, I'm not gonna do this beginning part here. So I'll go ahead and first off set my endpoint around here. So I'll just press I for in and that's going to mark my timeline with a range right here and it's only gonna play back between these spots. And I could do O for the out point the same way. And so now what I want to try and do is figure out what channel would be the best to track. Now, if I track this normally, I would always mess up right here because you can see this blue lightning. If I view the blue channel, it actually changes what our ship looks like and changes the background significantly as well because it is, well, it's a blue lightning bolt or uh, electricity or anything like that. If I view the red channel, not really there. Green channel, there a little bit more. So the red channel has good contrast and the lightning bolt's not really in there that much. So it would make sense that probably the red channel is our best candidate to track. So first thing to do always, look at your footage, see what you have, let it loop a few times, and then you start making educated uh, guesses kind of from there, or decisions from there. So first off, I'm gonna choose my footage and go ahead and add a shuffle node and shuffle the channels just to the red channel. So the red, green, and blue all have the red channel information in there. So we have a nice silhouette at the beginning, but even as we get into the shot, there's still a good amount of contrast. So now since the ship is scaling up and down and it is rotating and it's moving, I'm gonna need at least a two point track. Because remember a one point track will just lock down your X and Y, your, just your, your horizontal and vertical movements. Whereas a two point track can figure out based on how it's moving. So if I track these two points right here and later on in the shot, it's saying, okay, these two points are getting closer together it's able to figure out, okay, the camera's getting further away or the object is getting further away from camera. Whereas if they're getting closer together or they're getting, the, the points are getting further apart, it knows that, okay, well, the object perceivably from the camera's point of view, it's getting closer to the camera. And the same thing with rotation. If this point and this point start to move this way and this way, then we know that the camera's rotating. So we know that two point tracking allows you to lock down position, rotation, and scale. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna go ahead and add a tracker node and since the ship does change throughout the course of the shot, both in, both in lighting and in its scale and everything, I'm probably gonna start in the middle. So if you're tracking, your object changes quite a bit, the middle can be a good spot because you'll track backwards and then forwards. Because when you start tracking, it uses your reference frame. It takes a snapshot of this and says, okay, what does this look like at this particular frame? And then it compares, at least by default, all your other frames back to that same frame. Okay. Is it, does it still look like that? Does it still look like that? Does it still look like that? And you can have it update every single frame, but typically that's a default behavior for a tracker. So if it changes too much from the beginning by the end, it might look too different and it's gonna mess up. So in this case, I'm gonna start in the middle and I don't have a tracker on screen yet because I need to click on add track. I'm gonna try and choose opposite corners of the ship for the most part. 
and I'm gonna just try and track patterns. So I'm gonna go ahead and shrink this down a little bit. Remember the inside square is the, the pattern it's trying to follow from frame to frame. I'll use this little engine right here. And the outside square is how far it's allowed to look from frame to frame for that pattern. If I had this go outside, meaning this is the pattern area it's trying to track, it may work, but it, since it's trying to track this entire pattern area, it might say, okay, well, this background's not really matching anymore. This is matching, and so it might mess up. So I might need to overlap a little bit, but I'm gonna ideally just try and start off just with this engine since that's part of the moving object I wanna track the entire time. And since it doesn't move too fast, I don't need to make this outside square too large, so it's not gonna to take too long to track or it might not get confused as much. So with that being said, about halfway through the frame range, I'm gonna go ahead and start to track backwards with the track backwards icon right here. And I'm actually gonna use the track backward range because I only want it to track to frame 28. So I'll click on the track backward range, I'll go from 85 to frame 28 with a step of one, meaning it's gonna go one and then two and then three and then four and just keep going backwards until it hits frame 28. So I'll go and do that. I'll watch this to make sure that it's sticking at, at least a reasonably good amount. It looks like it did. Now I'll go back to where around where I started and I'll go ahead and track forward to the end of the frame range. And again, just follow along and see if it sticks pretty well. I'm not worrying about if it's scaling or rotating right now. I'm just wanting to make sure it sticks to this general pattern region. All right, so it looks like it did. At least it did a pretty decent job. We can always refine this later if we need to. So that's our first track. Go and go back to roughly the middle. I'm gonna disable this track for now and add another track since I don't wanna retrack that area that I already did. I'm gonna use the lower right hand spot of this, or at least the screen, uh, screen right lower part of the ship and I'll try and track this little landing gear section right here. And I think that's enough of a pattern that it should stick, but I might give it a little bit more vertically as well so it can feed into this part of the ship as well. Again, I'm trying to avoid the background as far as the pattern region because that is gonna change as the shot's moving. And again, I'll give it a little bit of room to breathe, but since the ship is moving slow, shouldn't be too much of a worry. I'll go and track backwards. Okay, and then I'll go ahead and track forwards, and I didn't use the range this time, it didn't really matter, but I'll go ahead and just let it go and track forward, and it should stop at the end, and there we go, and I'll go and scrub through and just see that's kind of helped us quite a bit, or at least it's stuck pretty well. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and enable this track, the track one, and I wanna go ahead, I'll give myself a little bit more room in the interface here. I wanna lock down my translation, meaning the X and Y movements of the ship, and I also want to lock down the rotation and the scale since it's rotating and getting closer and further away from the camera. So with all that checked, I want to go over here. I'm going to leave this connected, but under the tracker itself, I'm going to go to the tracker tab. I'm going to create a transform stabilize option right here and click on create. And it's going to create a transform node that has the inverse properties of where the ship was actually moving so it can cancel out the movement and try and keep it centered. Now the one other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna choose a spot where the ship is uh, probably relatively large and centered. So this looks like a pretty good spot right here. I'm gonna make this my reference frame, meaning this is gonna be my zero, zero as far as my tracking coordinates. So in my tracker node, make sure that's enabled, I'll go to transform tab, you can see that the rotate, translation, all these have numbers in them because the reference frame is one it, where it started tracking at, at one point in time. When I set this to the current frame, now my zero, zero is all zeroed out at frame 48. And this is gonna become a little bit more important when I start doing my roto in just a second. So to make sure this is working, I can plug my transform stabilize into my original footage, view it, and I'll go ahead and X out these controls, or I can just press Q to turn off the on-screen controls. I just wanna make sure I turn them back on after I'm done. And I wanna see if this is basically stabilized now. So it's gonna, the background's gonna be especially jittery. But let's say I hover with my mouse over this spot in the shot right here. Is that really moving that much? No, not really. It's sticking pretty much to that spot. If I hover over the lower right hand part of the landing gear. Is that really moving or rotating anymore? No, not really. So for the most part, this is locked it down. And that's what I want because what I'm gonna do, and let's just say I wanna make this a pink ship. Alien has a pink ship, I don't know why, but I wanna make it a pink ship. I'm gonna do roto for the ship and then I'm gonna color correct it afterwards. But again, like we talked about at the beginning of the video, I don't wanna have to go through frame by frame or at least 
every amount of frames and do another keyframe for all my points. So I'm gonna press O for Roto. I wanna make sure it matches the resolution of my footage, which is 718 by 462. So I'll press S for settings down here. And it is already set for 718 by 462. If not, I would just use the drop down and choose that. I'll go in and zoom in and make sure I'm on my reference frame, which that will be important. So my reference frame is 48. So I'll make sure I'm on frame 48. I'm gonna go ahead and create my roto shape. I'll go ahead and get my transform controls off screen or my track controls on screen. I'm gonna go ahead and make a roto shape for this. I'm not gonna make it perfect because it's just kind of an example. And I'm not gonna worry about these little spots up here, but I'll go ahead and start to draw this. And I'll go ahead and just use regular Bezier handles for this. It's more of a uh, kind of engineered type of object. And I'll go ahead and go through here down a bit get around the engine a little bit here so not the best roto job I definitely want to do a better job if I was really doing this but at the same time I don't want you guys to just have to sit here and watch me do articulate roto not the most exciting thing to watch so I'll go ahead and try and finish this up pretty quickly here and again, I'm kind of missing these little wings off the side here, uh, like here and here and here. I could include those, uh, but just for the sake of this right now, I'll go ahead and do this right here. And I can always go back and refine this after the fact. But Okay, so I think I've mostly got that laid out. And now I'm just going to go through looking at the stabilized footage and just set keyframes when I feel like it's off the most. So let's see, it looks like it's off quite a bit here. It looks like it's matching for the most part. I'll select them all at once and I'll see if I can get them kind of a little bit more roughed in correctly. And then I'll make adjustments where I need to. It's always better when you're doing Roto if you move points as groups instead of individual points. It just uh, gives you cleaner, smoother results. And I'll go ahead and grab this, these guys here. I'll go ahead and grab the landing gear and maybe use the arrow keys and nudge that down just slightly. And I'll nudge these guys over here as well. All right, so that, again, doesn't look great. Uh, I probably want to tweak that more, but that looks okay for that frame, at least better. And let's see what other frames we have that were off quite a bit. This looks pretty good. I'm just going to bring this over just a bit right here and up a bit right there. And let's go ahead and check the end where it looks like it's off quite a bit, or at least a decent bit. Go ahead and start off with the ship as a whole. And I'll start to tweak little sections. All right, looks like that's not looking too bad. Use the arrow key on the uh, number pad to adjust that a little bit. And maybe just bring this down just a tad. All right, so right now I only have one, two, three, four keyframes. And it looks like aside from, let's see, frame right there, that's a little bit off. I'm not gonna spend any more time on this. I don't want you guys to have to just stare at this, but I'll just fix this little spot right here where it looks like it's a little bit off there. And we'll call this done just for the sake of this example. And again, since we're gonna soften this just slightly and use this just for color correction, not gonna be that big of a deal if it's off just a little bit. Unless if your supervisor said you need to fix it perfectly, then you fix it perfectly, obviously. All right, so right now, if I go ahead and play this through, it looks like that rotor shape is sticking pretty decently. There's a couple spots I would want to go back and fix, like right here, but I'll just leave that as is for now. The downside of what's not working is that if I go ahead and try and cut out the ship right now, or color correct the ship, let's go and cut it out first to see how well it's working. So I'm going to go and do a copy node, K for copy. I'm going to copy the A into the B, meaning I'm copying, copying the alpha channel from the A input into the alpha channel of the B input. So if I view this and press A for alpha, well, it does have an alpha channel. It doesn't look lined up. Let's go and cut it out and see why. We go and play this back. All right, well, this is clearly not working. And hopefully you can guess why. The reason being is that I only have four keyframes or five or however many I did on keyframes on this roto shape. And remember the transform was taking care or the stabilize, this tracker was taking care of the rest. Whereas I have the original footage going right into this and this roto shape doesn't have the rest of that moving information. So this is where the expressions kind of come into play a little bit more and help us in that I'm going to go ahead and double click on this tracker node. And in the tracker tab, 
Make sure these are both enabled. I'm going to go ahead and drop down to transform match move instead of stabilize because I want to keep the original movement in the shot. I want the ship to be moving as it was normally, but I just want to have the roto shape fall along with it so I can color correct the ship. So in this tracker node, I'm going to go ahead and choose match move and click create. And now I have based off the same numbers, it's just not inverted them to take out the movement. I have it match the movement of the ship. And I can plug this into the roto shape. And now basically I have the four keyframes or however many I had to adjust for the kind of errors in what I had. And then the match move is going to take care of the rest of the motion. And now when I do the copy node and do the pre mult to line it up, now I have my ship basically cut out. Now if I play this back, you can see that with only four frames, and I, again, I need to tweak this some more. You can see, especially at the beginning, you can see some more of the background. But for the most part, I have this roto with only a few keyframes. And so now let's go ahead and do the color correction. So this cutout was just to help us check to see how well this was working. So I'll go ahead and just disconnect this for now and move this off to the side. And so now to actually go ahead and do our color correction, I'll just make a grade node. I'll plug in our original footage and view it. If I go ahead and color correct it right now and make our purple ship, it's going to make the whole shot purple. But if I go ahead and use the mask input for the grade node, meaning it's only allowed to color correct where it's white in the alpha channel that's being input, meaning the ship. Once I plug this in, now it's only color correcting this little area. So now if I play this back, you can see that we have a now pink ship flying into the hangar in the alien world of Ridley Scott and uh, James Cameron. So uh, the last thing I might want to do is just a little bit of a harsh edge. So I might blur the edge of my roto shape just very slightly. So I'll go ahead and add a blur node, blur just the alpha channel, just maybe just like one or two pixels just to soften it up just a bit. And again, I would go back and refine this roto because it is going outside the bounds. But overall, now I have with minimal effort, especially if I wasn't talking through this, I'm able to color correct this ship and I can keyframe it over time. I can use it for whatever. I could do very specific areas of color correction and I had to do very minimal articulate roto on the ship. So hopefully you can see, even though this is a silly example, hopefully you can see the flexibility that tracking helps you in doing your things like roto and stuff like that. And you can start to incorporate this into your own shots in very creative ways, just saving work overall. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next Johnny How To.